All that and more. But first, our top story tonight, new allegations that big banks are using big data to discriminate against low income customers they believe are most likely to overdraft their checking accounts or bounce checks. But big banks argue they are using the databases to avoid fraud artists. Here to weigh in, Neil Weinberg, editor-in-chief of American Banker, and Wallace Turbeville, former vice president of Goldman Sachs. Wallace, I'm going to start with you. Allegations tonight in the New York Times that over a million low-income Americans basically are being kicked out of banks because there were errors in some of these databases. What do you say? Well, thanks, Jerry, for having me here tonight. I appreciate it. Um, the, yes, that's the, the gist of the article is about two, two things, uh, errors in databases, which occur. I think we've all experienced that. And also uh, the fact that the way the databases are used, that the consequences of certain activities that you might engage in, you might have, a, you might have an overdraft uh, because everybody shares the same databases and there are very few banks left that people deal with, right. that you could be foreclosed from having a bank account, which could have serious consequences. Absolutely. I mean, I, I do think that most Americans should be in the banking system. Neil, what do you say? I mean, it seems logical to me that if you overdraft your account, that's not a good thing. That's not where you should be. What do you say? <clears throat> I say from the bank's point of view, it's a good thing. This is a big source of profits for them, I overdraft know. fees. They like the overdraft fees. $32 billion. Fees. Exactly. So there's something a little funny about this story saying that they want to kick people out because of overdraft fees. What the banks don't want to do, Jerry, is lose money. And the problem is a lot of the people who may have overdraft fees also have very low balances and they don't take out other services from the banks. So the banks don't make money from them. They don't want to give these people standard accounts. They'd like to find ways to make money off them, but a standard savings account or checking account ain't going to do it. Too expensive for them. That's what they think. Wallace, should banks be serving everybody who wants to come? Well, banks have to serve a purpose. I mean, the fact of the matter is when this happens, that what there is a service is provided. It's, it's called payday lenders or wire services or check cashing uh, operations. Very expensive. Extraordinarily expensive. And as the uh, CFPB just did, stated in a white paper, they're, they're routinely misused. And they, uh, they're, 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 uh, the, the, the headline is use them for, for very short term borrowing and infrequently. But in fact, many, many people use them month to month to month. I know, but it, it makes no sense financially to use a payday lender. Now, Neil, you brought up the fact that overdraft fees make a lot of money for the banks, $32 billion last year. You know, we could get rid of this problem for consumers in getting rid of overdraft fees and saying if you if you use your debit card and you don't have any money in your checking account, guess what? You get turned down at the cash register. Why not just do that? Well, you could do that. You'd have a lot of angry customers, both at the retailers and at the banks. So that's a problem. I'd rather have but, that happen. But to your point, you, one of the reasons I think that the banks have not been more aggressive in developing these sort of small dollar loans is because they do make a lot of money on overdraft. A lot of people are using the overdraft service in lieu of getting these low balance accounts or these low balance loans. And that's one reason that the banks are not in a great hurry to find a better solution here, Jerry. Well, I, I think it's interesting that uh, there's a lot of complaining about this on the one hand. But on the other hand, Wallace, people have to take responsibility for their own checking account at the end of the day, right? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Um, I've got a it happened to me not too long ago that I uh, actually changed over from one checking account at J.P. Morgan to another. Uh, Aren't and, you a former Goldman Sachs banker? How was it possible that you get turned down somewhere? Well, I, what happened was <laughs> what happened was a mistake. A mistake. <laughs> what happened was J.P. Morgan didn't move my overdraft line of credit to the to the proper account, and the next thing you know, I got I got dinged. So in See, fact, in I fact, would think somebody like happened. you would never be dinged. I was not pleased, as you might guess. But the the, the point is that, the point is that these things happen. And I think the real, the real point is, especially for, for people who may not, not have a relationship banking like I have, it's, it becomes uh, a fait accompli what's going to, what's going to transpire. For me, I, I was, you know, I'd go in and talk to my personal banker. Yeah, and well, work you have an out. in. See, most of us don't have an in. That's just the problem. Yes, and then we is. have no relationship with a banker because we can't use the bank. I think people are really frustrated That's with right. what feels like a closed door policy and keeping us out. How do we fix that? I don't know. But I want to share something else. This, is, this is, reminds me of a survey we've been talking about all week here. And that's people who are, want to leave banks. More and more often what we're seeing is people want to get out of banks because they don't like the fees they're being charged. Apparently there's some $230 billion in deposits at risk, people who say they want to go. Neil, how are lenders, how are bankers thinking about these numbers? Banks, for one thing, this is a big number to you and me, $230 billion, Jerry. But to banks, it's not that big. They, they said care. the worst was Citibank. And I looked, it was 
was only about 2% of their balances. And I think banks are a lot like cable companies. Everybody hates their cable company. Everyone hates their bank. But they don't move because they provide the service that they want. And what we found with the so-called bank transfer day a few years ago with Occupy Wall Street and, you know, tear down the banks, those people, they said transfer. Well, we did see a fair amount of transfers, but it was mostly among big banks because they got the ATMs and they got the branches and they got what people want. I got to tell you, though, there were a lot of people who walked away to other kinds of in lending institutions out there. Uh uh, credit, credit bureaus, unions. Uh, credit unions got a lot of that. And I, and I think there was, you know, Bank of America walked away from that $5 a month right. debit card fee because they knew it was bad news for them. Look at this list, though. This is very interesting. 2013 brand vulnerability rankings. These are companies, banks, Citibank leading the charge here, that are vulnerable, that consumers may want to walk away from. Look, at the end of the day, you may say that the numbers don't matter, they're not important, they're too small, but at some point they could be big. This could be a growing trend. Wallace, what do you say? Well, I think so, and I, th I, think, I think the analogy was drawn to a cable company, which I think is exactly right. <laughs> I, think the, I think the banks, especially since there are so few banks now, and since they, they share databases, which is, was part of the New York Times story, I think that what, what, what's, what's happening here is more and more we're sort of, we sort of see what's always really been the truth, is that banks uh, serve a public uh, purpose. And they actually, they actually do things for us, and it's, it's, a, it's a great franchise, if you will, to be able to, to, to handle the money flows. So it's a great I think, franchise, but it, you know, it's not a public trust, obviously, and it's not like a public utility where I can get guaranteed service. Unfortunately, they are guaranteed bailouts, and I think that's yes. what makes people so angry. If, you're gonna, if we're guaranteeing your survivability, right. then you should give me service. Neil? Yeah, and I also think that what you have going on here is we have a huge public policy issue. How do you serve yeah. these people? And the banks are in business to make money, so what you need to right. do, you have two choices. You can either do it by government fiat, not my choice, or you find a way to open the market for more competition. I think there's some positive signs there, Jerry. Well, I hope there are. Great to see both of you. Wallace and Neil, thanks for coming on tonight. Appreciate your Thank time. you very much.